Okay, great. Excellent. Well, good morning, everyone. I uh, hope you all had a lovely weekend um, and welcome to this very special ASM with very special guests. Uh, this is the week of World Children's Day and we thought there's no better way to start the week than to hear from children at our ASM because World Children's Day is a day for and by children. Uh, and as you all know, this year falls during sort of extraordinarily challenging times. Um, and as we respond to the broad ranging to the impact of COVID and reimagine a safer, fairer and better South Africa, the voices of children and young people need to be heard sort of louder than ever. So I'm going to hand over to Hal, who is chairing today and will lead us all through this exciting first ever Little Humans of UNICEF ASM. Hal, over to you. Well, thank you, Toby. Uh, a very good morning, colleagues. As you all know, my name is Hao, and I am part of the communications and partnership section. And um, today's ASM is rather extraordinary. Um, we have five young participants that are part of our meeting, and they each have burning questions to ask us. Without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to Sachaba. Sachaba, would you like to say hi to everyone? And you may go ahead and ask your question. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sajaba Rahosi. I am ten years old. Um, do you um, okay. do you think will things will go back to the way they were? Also, do you think that we can have a COVID nineteen free future? Well, thank you, Sajaba. That is such a beautiful question. I feel I would direct this to the health section. Anyone from the health section that is ready to take on the question, go ahead. But do bear in mind, we have a limit of three minutes allocated per answer. So go ahead. Good morning. I, I don't know if my colleagues are online. Uh, hi, uh, this is Mariam from the health section. You, you ask a very good question and difficult to answer. If the whole world is asking the same question. So I don't know if I can give a straight answer. What I can tell though, that it's going to get take so a while for us to go back to normal uh, because um, the scientists are working hard to get vaccines, to make sure that uh, 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 what we call herd immunity, most many people are protected. Then we may be able to go back to normal. But in the meantime, make sure that you wash your hand with soap, you wear your mask, you keep your distance. And even if the vaccines is um, distributed in South Africa sometime next year, those three practices will have to continue. I know I'm not answering your question the way you want it, but it will take some time to get there. Over. Well, thank you very much, Miriam. And I think I think you answered it well. And I feel Sachawa might actually have a little bit more um would have a better clue clue of what he was asking than he did before. So as you all know, we're currently, um, a lot of students are undergoing the exams. For the rest of the participants, I'm going to have to share my screen in order for you to hear their questions because they've sent us video recordings of their burning questions. Hi, my name is Naidi Kuzaya and I live in Pretoria, Savannah Country Estate. COVID-19 has changed a lot these days. It's changed our future and everything and also changed our education. A lot has changed through South Africa through COVID-19. We had to social distance and wear masks during our school day. It became very hard to uh, it became very hard to social distance while you see your friends at school like for a very long time six months lockdown happened and we haven't seen them for a very long time so it became very hard to social distance and we would know that it would just make the infections rise so we had to be hard and social distance the question that i would like to ask today is that covid 19 has impacted our schooling this year what can be done to make sure that COVID-19 doesn't affect the future, the future of education in, uh, in South Africa. So thank you very much. That's a question from the lady and I would actually direct that to the education section. So anyone from the education section that would like to answer the lady's question. 
and bearing in mind that we each have three minutes allocated to your answers. Hi, how are we? It's Wycliffe here. Can I Hi, give Wycliffe. it a... Sure, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Naledi, for that. It's a beautiful question indeed and quite uh, forward thinking. The reality is that COVID has affected everything and nothing will ever be the same. But for you, education, the issue is what is it that happens to the sector so that your future and the future of your other siblings <clears throat> is not interrupted unduly because of this pandemic? I think there are opportunities that COVID-19 has given us, and this one positions the sector to be in quite a good stead to re-examine itself and to determine the best way, one, to offer education, and two, how to offer, I mean, the content of that particular education. So South Africa has actually adopted a very good strategy to contain the impact of COVID, and this one is within the framework of what we can call reimagining education. We reimagine the content, we reimagine the delivery modalities. South Africa has actually now entered embarked on, uh, on, uh, on a whole exercise of trimming the curriculum to make sure that the curriculum offers just the basic essentials of knowledge and skills and competencies that children need to be able to thrive in a very fast changing world. So focusing on minimum core contents and opportunity brought about by COVID is one way in ensuring that education continues uninterrupted and that uh, the, the, the content of learning is relevant. The second is on the delivery of, of education, so that within the context of the fourth industrial revolution and the 21st century imperatives, which are di uh, uh, dictated by technology, is to make use, leverage tech to be able to complement the, the normal face-to-face -face delivery of education. A final thing is that uh, there is need to focus not just on, the, on learning itself, but on deepening psychosocial support to children. And South Africa is learning the hard way that we are not able to do that effectively because not all our teachers are trained in guidance and counseling. So reorienting teacher education is going to be one other opportunity that the sector is having to ensure an interrupted provision of education. I think that's in a nutshell should be it for yes. me. If thank of the you team very much, White. Yes, I feel like we've reached to the end of our three minutes, but thank you very much for your very extensive answer. And I am sure that Naledi would feel that her question was answered. Now, without any further ado, without um, taking up any more time, I would like to share the next um, question from Karabo. Hi there, my name is Karabo. I'm currently 16 years old and I'm in grade 10. My question is regarding child protection. I have heard that UNICEF is working together for every child. So I would like to know how the United Nations Fund is imagining a South Africa that is fit enough for every single one of us. Well, you know, that's a question from Karab and she clearly said the question directed at the child protection section. Um, I would actually open the platform. <laughs> Good morning, Karelo. Um, and thank you so much, Karabo, uh, for, uh, uh, for this important question. So, the way that we see um, South Africa for all children, one is for every child to be equal and to grow up in a nurturing and loving family environment. And that's why we do st family strengthening programs and empower parents in their caregiving skills. And that every child, both boys and girls, have equal opportunities to be registered at birth, to be immunized, to have access to early childhood care and development, to have access to education, to have access to safe water and sanitation. So it will be very important for all of us to understand how everyone can make sure that every child is safe at all times and growing up to his or her full potential. So how we see it is that everybody knows what children's rights are and that they apply them in their daily job and duties around the country, from the parents to the aunties to the grannies to the grandparents, as well as everybody else from the state to civil society in order to make sure every child has equal opportunities to thrive, to stay safe, to develop, and to be empowered. And Brussels, you can comment up if you like. Thank you. Thank you, Mikey. 
Would Russell thank like to add a word or two? Yes. Yes, so thank you, Ma thank you, Michael. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Karabo, wonderful question. Let me just say this to you. The future that we want is the future that we will together negotiate, that we will work out as communities, as parents, as children, we have to work it out together. So if you go to a school, for example, where on a Friday things are not what they should be, it's not just about calling the department, but it's about the parent community coming together and putting pressure on the school to make sure that education is delivered every single day. Or if you see there's any rubbish piling up in your community, it's not just about calling the city council, but it's making sure that all of us, kids, adults, government, private sector, we all play our part. So the future, Carabo, is one where we all participate, we all have our say, and we all uh, are participating in, 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 in making this new dream. I hope that helps, and I think you've got the power to do so, Carabo. Over. How? Well, thank you, Russell. That is indeed rather inspiring. Thank you, Russell and, and Mikey. So I'm going to move on to the next participant. So Tsego Fato has a question to ask. Um, Hi, my name is Tsego Fato uh, My question for the UNICEF is, what are, what are some of the things that the UNICEF has been doing to build a better future? Okay, so that is a question from Tsego. And Tsego's question is, what are some of the things that UNICEF is doing to build a better future? I think Christine will take the question. Thanks, okay, Thank you, Muriel. Thank you, Carl, and thank you for uh, Tsepo's question. I think Muriel could also add to whatever I um, I want to share with uh, with you and, and with him. And I was wondering, uh, Carl, if, if these children who have asked questions can now listen to us. Is, is it the case, or will we convey these, uh, the recording of this um, conversation uh, to, to them? So, so Chaba is actively online at the moment, and he's listening in. And the other children are actually, you know, they they in the midst of the exams and will only receive the recording after the meeting. Okay. So I, I wanted to first thank the uh, the children for agreeing to be with us uh, today, to be with the adults in UNICEF, to share their thoughts and to uh, ask uh, very important questions. So about this uh, this particular uh, question from, um, it's Tepo, right? Yes, it is from Tepo. Uh -huh. So one thing I wanted to uh, highlight, and then Muriel could probably uh, uh, add as well, is that um, the COVID-19 pandemic actually helped us highlight the plight of uh, the most vulnerable children, those who we don't usually see, uh, those for whom actually UNICEF works day in, day out. But we were able to uh, now see how, how um, fragile, how dire the situation of these children uh, is. And uh, something that we, we will together, and as Russell just said, with all of you, uh, with the children's voices, with the adolescents' uh, voices, uh, their participation, their actions, their agency, we want to make sure that post-COVID-19, uh, hopefully we will get there you know, uh, sooner than later, we are able to make sure that we, we bring uh, health, we bring education, we bring sanitation to the children who don't have it. Um, many, many children, probably those who are uh, with us today, are uh, fortunate enough, privileged enough to have been able to continue to learn, uh, to have the, the water that they need to wash their hands, to be able to be away from uh, places where they can be at risk of uh, contamination from the, 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 uh, the virus, but many children uh, did not or do not have that uh, privilege. So we hope that uh, uh, while this uh, pandemic is ongoing and afterwards, we will continue to make sure that the lives of those children improves. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. And thank you so much for the extensive answer. And I feel that Soho would also feel that his answer, question has been answered. So now, for the last participant, last but not least, 
this particular participant has a rather burning question, which I myself would love to get the answer to. So without any further ado, um, this is Tiago with his question to UNICEF. UNICEF, why did you have so many meetings? Why do we? <laughs> that is the okay. best question I've ever had so far. <laughs> It's a brilliant question, Tiago. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think Muriel should respond to the last question that we had. <laughs> Somebody has to say why we have so many meetings. Oh. It's an excellent question, as some colleagues have said, and we need to answer that question. Muriel. Thank you. Thank you. I, I laughed. You had me laughing, uh, Tiago, because it, it's a question that we all ask almost on a daily basis. But you know the reason why uh, the meetings are important? Look at the screen right now. Uh, you will see that we all have different, different backgrounds. So some of us are actually not in the office. Uh, and we are not in one space where you can walk to your colleague and you have a chance to talk to them or ask them a question. And because we are dealing with um, COVID, which we really don't understand, it's very important that we keep talking to each other, we keep checking with each other how we are doing and making sure that uh, we are working together well. So that's why we've had a lot of meetings and I know your mom has been on the screen, sitting there listening and participating in meetings almost every day. But we hope, we hope that as we understand the, the, the you know, COVID better and we start going back to the office, then even the number of meetings is also going to go down. So thank you, Tiago, for that question. And a reminder that really it's important that we don't spend too much time uh, sitting at our desks because it's also not healthy. So it's important that uh, even as we are working at home and we are having our meetings, we still have time to walk around, to interact with people in the house, in the office, etc. But uh, meetings for now have really been too much for everyone. We feel it, but they were necessary because we're dealing with very complicated issues. But thanks again. Muchas gracias, Tiago. Okay, so if there isn't any anything else to add to this, this does bring us to the conclusion of our meeting. And I hope this meeting has been quite, um, not just entertaining, but also, you know, insightful. And it's always lovely to hear what children mm -hmm. are actually thinking about UNICEF and their questions. Um, yes, it's the end of our meeting. Thank you so much, colleagues, for joining in. And yes, take care. Have a lovely morning.